Today, we are going to review Cousin Rob's 981 Cayman S. I'm Justin. And I am Aaron. And this is Hoosman Bros. And before we go too much further, please subscribe for more great content like this down below. Well, our present is so bright, we have to wear shades. Absolutely. It's not just the sun, it's the sun on the wheels here. Now, this car has its own name. Lemonhead. Lemonhead, and I think it's appropriate. I, so, I guess why? Leave it in the comments. <laughs> so let's talk about the 981 Cayman S. So let's start here at the front. Absolutely. Here we have this. It is a Porsche. It looks like a Porsche. To some inexperienced people, they may look at it and think it's a 911, but it's not. Not. It does have the raised fenders, but the headlights are a little different. Yep. We have the front end here that's similar, yep. but also a little bit different. And up here, we also have a frunk. Right. Because the engine is not in the front, but unlike a 911, it is not in the back. It's, it's in, the in the middle. Yes, it's a mid-engine car, now, which gives it a little better balance, a little it, different balance, I should say. It does. So what I've heard from the people that have both of these is that this is a race car for the streets. 911s are fast cars. They have been race cars in the past, but this is more race car DNA and feels more like a race car than a modern 911 does. Absolutely, don't sell yourself short. This 981 on the streets can do every bit as much speed as you really need on the streets. In fact, the police would say probably a bit too much. Well, and it handles a little differently because of the mid-engine as well. Yes. Uh, we come back to the back here, scoops for engine cooling. And then as any good race car, a big wing. Now this is an aftermarket wing. This S didn't come with it, but I think it suits it very well. Rob did a great job. Uh, now we'll look at the back here. Caymans are great road trip cars because they do have that frunk, but because the engine's in the middle, they also have a trunk. So if you're a Porsche guy going on a road trip, make sure you either have a Cayman or you're friends with someone who has a Cayman that will give you some of their luggage space. Absolutely, so this does have a factory spoiler on it. And this, much like the 911, is a speed activated spoiler. If you get above about 75 miles an hour, it's gonna come up and it's gonna go back down once you go below 45. So the Cayman is sitting on these 20 inch wheels. Obviously we've got them in black and nice big brakes on here with uh, drilled rotors and it does have steel brakes, not ceramics. Another big difference between the Cayman and the 911, between the 981 and the 911, is the size. This car is smaller than the 911, and you can really tell on the inside because it is a two-seater. There is no back seat in this car, and so it feels a little bit more compact than the 911 does. So the 981 is the last generation of this Cayman. After this, they turn into 718s. So this car is a 3.4 liter flat six. This makes it one of the more desirable 981 because it is one of the last six cylinders. When you get into the 718s, which is what this turned into, most of those cars, setting aside GT cars, are four cylinder and turbo, but this is still a six cylinder. Now this one, factory, about 325 horsepower. Rob has added some fab speed headers with 200 cell cats on it, so he thinks he's probably pushing 335. I know he's got goals for faster. and As he does some of the work on this, we will make some videos about what he's doing to make this faster, so stay tuned for those as well. Uh, to your point about this being a desirable car, Rob did not buy this brand new. He actually bought it used, but this car has continued to appreciate ever since he bought it. So he has been able to drive this car not only for free since he's had it, he is actually profiting from owning this car. You only profit when you sell, but to Aaron's point, original cost on this $46,000, about a $55,000 car now because of that appreciation. Now, don't forget the color. This may be a stopper for some, but I think on this car, it's perfect. Uh, this is a great little yellow car, and I think that I would pay a little bit more for a car this style with this color. Yeah, and for you who is commenting right now that this car was not 46,000 brand new, I, I agree with that. <laughs> it was used and that's what Rob purchased it for. There we go. There you and go. if Saved you want to join one. our research department so that we don't make any errors <laughs> anymore, leave a comment down below. We could certainly reuse that. So I think we should take it for a drive. And you know what? This time I'm going to drive it. All right, I have been recruited to do the inside drive on this one because Aaron doesn't have good enough word to do a great job of reviewing things. So I'm gonna do my best here. Now, this car to me feels much smaller than a 911. Uh, it doesn't feel super crowded, but it certainly feels a little bit tighter. There's no back seat. You can feel that rear wall right up on you here. Now, some of the things I really like about the interior here, this is actually a working clock. Our Sport Chrono on the GTS is just a timer, and this is a clock. Here we have the exposed paintwork. It's really nice. This is certainly a Porsche inside, and it will go. 
Now this is a PDK, Rob likes to do the paddle thing, I don't. I don't think I am any faster than the automatic that's already in this car. Sorry, PDK, don't call it an automatic. But I don't think I'm any faster than it, so I'm just going to enjoy it. I do like having my normal five-speed car, but I don't need to shift. This works just as well. Some of my other nitpicks about this car, other than it feeling a little smaller than the 911, is there is not a whole lot of rear window to look out of. And on this car, it's taken up by spoiler. Looks great. Runs great little hard to see out of for me. As with all Porsches, everything feels crisp and nice. It's a very, very nice car. The setup here is a little bit different. Lots of options. We do have zone control here, which in a tiny sports car like this, I don't even know how necessary that really is. And this is almost identical to the new Boxster and Cayman. So this is in the modern side of Porsches as opposed to my 996 or even our 997. Now Rob has done a couple things to this car, as we said, and you can certainly feel it. I think this car stock is in the 300 and some change horsepower range. And he's done a couple things to make it just a little bit faster. And you can certainly feel it and hear it. Now the Porsche entertainment system here is standard and it's very nice, but I, I don't listen to the radio much when I'm driving fast cars like this. I like to hear the car, I like to enjoy it steering wheel is always as comfortable. Now he has a smooth leather wheel on this. I like that better than the Alcantara, um, but I like the smooth leather as well. Um, the Alcantara feels funky, it gets matted. The smooth leather is cleaner and better, I think. So this car feels more like a race car. And if you remember our video with Jack, go watch that, we'll link it down below. He has several of these cars and that's what he's told me over and over again, that a 911 is a great car, but it came in as a race car for the streets, and it feels like it. It's a stiffer ride. It seems to handle a little differently. And it is a lot of fun. Again, though, it just feels small to me. Now, one of the nice things about a Cayman, though, or a Boxster, is that because it is a mid-engine car, the engine's right behind me, you get both a frunk and a trunk, which is plenty to haul. I have lots of friends who have Caymans and Boxsters who love taking them on road trips because there's so much more room than a 911. And the steering feels just a little bit tighter and a little more responsive than either one of my 911s. Again, this thing just really feels like a race car. Now, the controls here, the, the, the gauges, they're all as normal, including the big tachometer right up front. That's the most important thing you find on any Porsche. You've got the tachometer front and center with a speedometer down below it, and then the analog speedometer is right next to it. But that's the standard layout. Now this one has a little bit different gauges, and we'll show those when we're to stop. He's got a lot more data on the right-hand side here than any of my 911s have, which is nice. If, if you're tracking this car, which is what this car is built for, it's nice to be able to see exactly how hot you are, what kind of fluids you got working, all that good stuff. If you are a crazy person and you want to ruin your Porsche, they do come with cup holders that are complicated, probably not very useful if my cup holders are any indication, and prone to breakage, but they are here, ready to be used, ready to spill a Coke all over the inside of your car. Obviously there's no back seat because your engine is right there behind you. I can't speak to how that works on a hot day or a long drive, whether you feel that engine back there at all or not, but it is right here and it is all very, very close. So Rob made me promise not to bash his car, and I don't think I did. This is a very nice car. I like this car quite a bit. Um, but those are my thoughts on it. For me, it's just a little bit tight, it feels that way. Although it's tight in some great ways and a little bit tight in some other ways that are not as good for me. But I do like this car. I don't think I would hesitate to buy one if it were in the right range. And this being the desirable Cayman, I think I'd probably pick one up pretty shortly. And I do have to say, I've always wanted a yellow car. And if I didn't have to drive it every day, I could probably deal with the tightness of this thing. Well, I hope it was everything you dreamed it would be. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Great car. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more great content like this. And if you want us to review your car, drop a line down below. We'd love to.